them balls right on to the wall, man. <laughs> Welcome to the show. This is the Balls to the Wall show right here on RealLibertyMedia.com. Or, <laughs> maybe you prefer, go right on over to uh, Vaughn.Live slash RealLibertyMedia. Because uh, it's possible the site's going to go down tonight as the hosting company is going to be upgrading for us, for me, for all of us, to possibly uh, make better performance there on Real Liberty Media. We'll find out. Uh, anyway, so they're upgrading, and they're going to do it right during the show. Ain't that fun? Anyway, welcome to everybody out there listening, wherever you may be, whether you're on Vaughn.Live slash Real Liberty Media, or you're on the actual Real Liberty Media site, because I think it's still up and going. So... You could be over there watching on the Frickers Ball Show page. Or you could be on the audio broadcast listening from any number of places, whether that be realliberty.org, freedomsnetwork.com. Uh, real, real, what, 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 what am I talking about here? Oh, Minds? Oh, I, I, you can't listen on Minds, but if you got the link from Minds or Twitter, welcome to you all as well, or tune in, or uh, whatever, man, we're everywhere. So it's Balls to the Wall tonight, and Moose Girl is off to watch a uh, Grateful Dead tribute band, <laughs> something like that at the, uh, what was the name of that place she said, uh, Stone's Throw, Stone's Throw Club, apparently there in the city of Eau Claire, Wisconsin, watching the Grateful Dead, having a good old time, so uh, have fun out there, Miss Moose, we'll miss you here. On the Balls to the Wall, Freakers Balls to the Wall show, showgram. But uh, that's all right. You, know, you got to go out and have your fun, young lady. Anyway, uh, welcome to all those people out there in the various places, and welcome to everybody here in the Real Liberty Media chat room on Freenode, irc.freenode.net. Yes, indeed, all the great folks. we got the barman and the cowboy tech and myself. And the Moose Girl's Nick is still here, so she's here in spirit. And we got Miss Kate and Asbo and Charles Adoni, Miss Circle, uh, Circle probably still sleeping. Chloe E and Don C and Eshalon and Graham Z and another Don C and Meester Brow and Poxified Phone. We got the Pone Sauce, we got the Rain of Fluke Butt. We got Mr. Yeah, yeah, you're the mean guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure you are. Anyway, we got Rob Works and Rome's and Vinny and uh, Phantom and Colfax and Cyborg Noodle and Dakota and Frumpy and Grubbit and Java Doctor 2 and uh, JJJ's. 999 JJJ's. And Kozu and Skittle. Just a flavorful guy, that Skittle. <laughs> anyway, um, today is, did I not mention yet, November 16, 2018. Which means next Friday, the 23rd, is Black Friday. <laughs> hey, Pox. Ooh, Pox is high. Pox is high. He's high as, a, high as can be. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so next Friday will be Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving Day, uh, which I guess means officially the uh, x Mass season starts, which is annoying. But um, it does. It just happens that way every year. And, you know, as as if, I don't know if what kind of emails you get, but I get them from all kinds of places. And the Black Friday shit started before Halloween. So, <laughs> they're really kicking it into gear now. Uh, black November, black whatever, man. So, uh, then you get to Cyber Monday after that, of course. Yeah, right. Yeah, if only I needed some kind of big useless, big useless piece of junk that I, I would pay way too much for uh, at a discount, though, because it's Black Friday. <laughs> so, and then you could go to Walmart and beat people over the head to get that toaster oven for your uh, nephew or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's next Friday. We'll worry about that from Black Friday next Friday. Just letting you know that that's, that's coming up. And, and by the way, and, and I just thought of this this afternoon, because we've never actually done this, even though we are on every Black Friday because it's Friday, and we're on Friday. So um, I, I may sound a bit different. That's okay. I'm using a, I'm using a deal. 
I'm using a little uh, uh, program to, to limit my, my top ends there so I, so I don't spike out. Anyway, um, being as next Friday is Black Friday, maybe you know how we do the uh, Halloween songs and we do the Christmas songs. Why not have a few Black Friday songs? I don't know what they would be. Uh, all, all I can think of is Steely Dan Black Friday, but maybe there's other ones out there that would fit the uh, the madness of Black Balls to the Wall of, of, of Friday uh, of that particular day. Find some shopping songs. Yeah, man, whatever. I, I just, it might be something new, something, you know, a little, little change up. Freakers, Balls, Friday, this, that, or the other thing. And your Dr. Demento stash. That would be good. Yeah, if you could find them on YouTube, then that would work out just fine. <laughs> anyway, um, just a thought. No, no, no big deal. No uh, uh, big thing either way. Anyway, I'm I'm going to jump right into some music here because I I want to, and I'm running the thing here, so that's what's going to happen. <laughs> let me uh, let me. Uh, change this here <laughs> so that says the right thing I'm going to do it on this one too alright okay good that, those are good those are good alright so we're going to jump right into some music here and uh, we'll be back after this maybe talk about some shit who knows we'll see what goes on oh look at this I think my volume's a little low on the uh, uh, on the audacity <laughs> which you won't notice until you get to the podcast which, if you do get to the podcast. Uh, anyway, here you go. This is uh, Steeler's Wheel. Papa Chubby turn it up to the who's won't get fooled again. And before that we had Except with their tune a Breaker. And we kicked it off with a Stuck in the Middle with You. Steelers Wheel. Good rock and roll stuff there, man. If you like good rock and roll, which hopefully you do. Uh, I, I, I mean <laughs> how can you not? Oh, uh, I suppose there are some people that just don't like music, though. Or that don't like good music, that like crappy music. We've seen some of them around, that's that's to be sure. But uh, yeah, this time we got good, good tunage, good tunages coming at ya. Right here on Balls to the Wall. Freaker, freakers, Balls to the Wall. <laughs> hey, knock that off, boys. Did I tell you to start that? I did not. All right. Sometimes the video starts, even though I got my little thing to make it so it don't start. Yeah. So it's uh, it's been a little cold here this week. We had a bunch of snow on Monday or Monday, yeah, Monday. Uh, it, was, it was a good, it was a good bit of snow come down to us, four or five, six inches, something like that. And uh, we only had that one day, and then it started warming back up. And uh, so today it was like 60, around 60. So, yeah. And uh, I, I don't, I don't see any more snow coming in the, in the very near future. Not that there won't be, but uh, I don't see it on the on the forecasty thing. So we'll find out what happens over the weekend. And, it, and it's good that it slowed down or stopped or whatever. Give, give me a break there. I'm because I'm still doing. Still getting some of that yard work stuff going done. And uh, I can't really do the yard work if there's a bunch of snow on the ground. <laughs> not, not like I'm going to take it chill it out of the way. Uh, it looks like, uh, let's see here, we got uh, Lebanon, Oregon coming up. It's at 46 degrees right now. And uh, looking good there. And it don't look like there's any snow coming to Oakley, Kansas either. Just... Uh, sharing you with some of the people doing checking their weather there in the chat room <laughs> if you're listening later on 
on the podcast, you don't see all this chat going on. Uh, yeah, so. Um, what's that? NSA spying on your call. Yeah, well, that that's, you know, they, they do that to everybody all the time. It's, every call is always, they, they do that. That's the way it goes. Uh, you know, whatever. Um, all right, let's get into some stories here. I got a bunch of news. I got I got all kinds of stories lined up, ready to go, ready to rock and roll, and and and, and my browser is actually working. <laughs> Since we're talking about snow, let's do this one here right now for y'all. Uh, November snow in Texas. Experts warn decreased solar activity will shatter all global climate models. Because those global climate models, yeah, they're fakes. Fake, fake, fakes. Anyway, this is uh, from Michael Snyder uh, via the Economic Collapse blog, posted on Zero Hedge. <laughs> so anyway, it says, our sun has been behaving very strangely. Actually, not really. Um, but but anyway, let's go on. And this unusual behavior is really starting to affect our weather patterns. It's always done that, Michael. It's always done that. There have been virtually no sunspots in 2018. Yeah, it's the uh, Maunder minimum. That's what's going on. As solar activity has dropped to an alarmingly low levels. As a better, as a result, not a better, as a result, our atmosphere has been cooling and shrinking. And experts are warning that we are headed heading for a bitterly, bitterly cold winter. And even though the official start of winter is well over a month away, uh, winter weather is already sweeping the nation. As uh, you will see below, uh, you won't see it, but I'm seeing it. Anyway, as you will see below, a giant winter storm is about to slam into the East Coast. But what is happening in Texas is even more unnerving. You see, it's not really that unnerving. Texas gets snow from time to time. Uh, and just because it's maybe a little early, um, as I said, it snowed here early, earlier this week. Um, but that happens here in, in, in central New Mexico. We're, we're way up high. We get, we get snow. Uh, anyway, on Wednesday morning, the temperature in San Antonio plummeted to just 23 degrees. Well, it got down to zero here. Anyway, and absolutely shattered the old record. Uh, shatters the old record of 28 degrees that was set back in 1916. The National Weather Service tweeted on Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday night, just before midnight, the city hit 28 degrees, breaking the previous record of 29 in 1907. Typically, November temperatures are significantly warmer. The average high for this month is about 71 degrees, and the normal low is about 51. Uh, San Antonio's average low this year has been comparable to other years, but the average high is a cool 66.6. .6. A devil weather going on down there. Over in Houston, things were even stranger. When Houston residents woke up on Wednesday morning, they were stunned to see snow on the ground. That's right, snow in Houston in November. <laughs> it isn't supposed to snow in November, mid-November in Texas. Uh, but sometimes it do. Anyway, Louisiana got some snow, too. Uh, something very unusual is happening. See, it's not really that unusual. I, I don't think it's really all that unusual uh, or it is that unusual because, well, it happens. Um, so I, I, I think I'll, I'll tag that as global cooling. Global cooling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got some, uh, uh, it, it happens just like the global warming happens when it happens. The global cooling happens when it happens. The Climate change? Yeah, it does. That's what it's supposed to do. It changes. So, uh, there. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> oh, man. How come I'm not seeing this on my thing here? There it is. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more to that story. A lot more to that story indeed. But, uh, hey, whatever. All right, I, I briefly want to cover this next story, just not because, not because I'm against it or for it. Or I don't really care one way or the other. Yeah, snow is a thing of the past. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so here's the article. It's on Yahoo.com. SpaceX gets Nod to put 12,000 satellites in orbit. Huh. So, like I said, it's not that I'm for this or against this. I, I don't care. Put all the satellites up there you want. But here's the thing that got to me in the first par sentence of the article. SpaceX got the green light this week from U.S. authorities to put a constellation of nearly 12,000 satellites into orbit to boost cheap internet, wi wireless internet across the uh, internet access by the 2020s. Well, here, here, here's my problem. Here's my problem. And you know what my problem is, if you know me. Who the hell are they? Who who are these U.S. authorities to say <laughs> who could put something in space or not? They don't own space. It's, it's not their space. Space is space. And, and so they got the nod from U.S. authority to put things in space. Well, what about the other countries that want to claim they lay their claim to space? Did they give the okay to? You got your, your Chinas and your Russias and your... France and Germany, did they all say it was okay? <laughs> and who are any of them to say it's okay or not? Uh, I, I, I just... It, it's disturbing to me that you have... that they feel they have to ask the U.S. authority to put satellites up in the space. If I want to put something in space, if I have the capability... I'd put something in space. I don't have the capability. But um, it's, it's really no, no business of, of any freaking authority. <laughs> and if you think it is, then you're going to try and tell me that the government of your United States owns space? <laughs> what kind of ridiculous crap is that? I don't know. Hey, I, I, did, I show you, did I show you that link? I did not. Let me, let, let me open that link back up because I closed it. And, 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 I, and I was going to share it with you there in the chat room. And I forgot. So there you go. All right. Um, so, yeah. My space, damn it! <laughs> no, not my space like the old, the old uh, social network thing. No, no, no. Not, not that kind of my space. Not that kind of MySpace. All right. Let's do this one. <laughs> just kind of all over the place here on these stories tonight, but whatever. They're just random stories that I came across, that I come across uh, during the week, you know, uh, as I as I browse around doing, looking for things. Um, I, I find stuff, and, and, and then I save it so I can share it with y'all, with y'all. With y'all here, all with y'all with, with freaks here on the figured ball. <laughs> uh, well, there, there is that. Rob Works points out the only one who has the authority to control what you put in space is the ones who can shoot it down. Yeah, well, there there is that little factor, but putting it up there in the first place, yeah, whatever, man. Okay, from the Daily Mail. Co. Uk. Is your security at risk? What? AI creates fake fingerprints that are so realistic they can hoodwink biometric scanners. Yeah. Researchers were able to mimic more than one in five fingerprints. They did this using a neural network called Generative Adver Adversarial Network. Researchers suggest fingerprint identification could become less secure. They can fake your fingerprints. What else can they do once they can fake your fingerprints? 
It goes on to say here, from unlocking smartphones to authorizing payments, fingerprints are widely used to identify people. However, a team of researchers have now managed to accurately copy fingerprints and created fake ones called Deep Master Prints. Researchers who created the fake prints using a neural network were able to mimic more than one in five fingerprints. These new technological developments suggest fingerprint identification could become increasingly less secure. I, I don't care so much about these various biometric identifiers for unlocking smartphones or authorizing payments. I don't use those. I imagine there are people that use those, but I, I, I don't use those. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, suppose they want to frame you for something. <laughs> All they got to do is make up a set of prints. Yeah, that's right. Master prints are real or synthetic fingerprints can, uh, can f what, fortuitously match with a large number of fingerprints. Researchers led by Philip Bongranger, Bongranger from New York University wrote in a paper. Um, in this work, we generate complete image-level master prints known as deep master prints, whose attack accuracy is found to be much superior to that of previous methods. A method, which was called latent variable evolution, is created by training a generative adversarial network, a GAN, or real fingerprint images. GANs teach algorithms uh, about a particular subject, in this case fingerprints by feeding it a massive amount of information. They don't even need your fingerprint. They don't. They, they, they can just give it some data about you, and they can create fingerprints. I, I don't really understand it. Um, uh, GANs teach an algorithm about a particular subject, in this case fingerprints, by feeding it all that information. It consists of two neural networks that learn from looking at the raw data. One looks at the raw data, the fingerprints, while others generate fake images based on the data set. Fingerprint systems do not generally read the entire fingerprint, but just record whichever part of it touches the scanner first. This means they're easier to fake than complete prints. Anyway, whatever it is, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I'm, I am not in favor of having, I'm not in favor of this. This is bad. This is bad, you know? <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> I think it's bad. <laughs> you may think differently. I, I, I don't know. To me, it's it's just wrong. It's just wrong that they could do that, or they would do that. What, what, is the, what is the purpose? What is the point? Why are they doing it? Why are they doing it? That's probably the real question. Why are they doing it? But speaking of AI, <laughs> is Gooberzilla here? Oh, Goober, you're going to miss this story. And I, and, and, and I really saved this story aside just for you, Goob. But here it is for the rest of y'all. Meet Autoblow. <laughs> Autoblow AI, the world's first oral sex robot. <laughs> Oh, a crowdsourced inventor in Chicago has produced an oral sex robot driven by artificial intelligence that studied over a hundred hours of pornography in order to recreate the perfect technique. Meet Auto Blow AI. Brian Sloan, the sex toys developer, told the Sun in an exclusive interview that his design for the Auto Blow AI was based heavily on feedback from the previous invention of his Auto Blow 2. And in response, he built a new machine that mechanically better replicates the gliding and friction combination of the mouth and hand that men <laughs> experience during oral sex. Uh, well, it, it, it is. It's, it, it's like a milker, but that would be the, the, the non-AI non version would be more of the milker. Accordingly, the device has 10 settings for different speeds and styles, including with short pauses to make it maximally realistic. 
<laughs> AI can learn your favorite settings, too. Uh, once the business is done, the sleeve can be removed and cleaned, thankfully, <laughs> for future use. When the device goes on sale in, the, in May of next year, the retail price for an auto blow AI will be $249. But banker, financial backers of this development can get one for half price. <laughs> you would think if they were financial backers, they'd get one for free. And probably not just one. You know, uh, I, 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 I kind of makes me wonder. I, I don't, I, I don't. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> auto blow. Ah. <laughs> uh, Forty nine dollars less than the Nintendo Switch, and this one, well, you don't. You don't have to play it. It plays you. <laughs> uh, what won't they think of next? And I'm sure that eventually this will be installed into an actual sex doll or sex robot if they actually come up with a robot. But for now, it's just a thing. Like a, I don't know, like a tube you stick your dick in. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Some funny video there involved if you're interested in such things. <laughs> All right. Hands free. Look, Ma, no hands. Oh, maybe don't look, Ma. <laughs> yeah, don't look, Ma. That would be wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. AC DC. Oh yeah, very nice, very very nice there. That was uh, the at the 2012 official Americana Awards, uh, the weight and uh, all star cast. Uh, let's I hope they got everybody covered here. Amy Helm, Teresa Williams, Larry Campbell, Emmy Lou Harris, John Hyatt, Sam Bush, Booker T. Jones, Richard Thompson, Bonnie Raitt. Brittany Howard, oh, and more. <laughs> yeah, that was the Miss Kate request. Thank you very much for that, Kate. That was that was that was wonderful. Anyway, before that, we had Christopher Amoroso on his three-string cigar box guitar doing "Runaway Train," and we kicked it off there with AC, DC, and Girls Got Rhythm. Yeah, with, with Bon Scott, by the way. Yeah, Bon Scott there in that uh, video. So. Uh, very nice. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm glad to play it. Um, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Alrighty. <laughs> now I get to this point in, in, in the thing. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, she does. She's, uh, she's, she's, she's a hell of a performer, man. I just, uh, yeah, really good stuff. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Yep. Well, yep, this is the part here. That right right here at this part of the show, between sets, uh, is the part that, uh, th this is the part where Bruce really helps out while, while I'm putting new songs in for the next set. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, uh, if I, if I was going to do this uh, on a regular basis, just, just me... I would have to go through and, and, and set up a bunch of sets ahead of time, um, uh, but if it's just you know every now and then, just 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 me, that's cool. I can I can uh, uh, make stuff up as I go along. Apparently, I'm 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 okay at that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so many moose girl requests in here, but I gotta save them for her. I I, I can't I can't do those while well, while well, she's not here. I guess I could. But I'm not gonna. Flying by the seat of my drawers! <laughs> That's right, Rob. Oh, man. So, uh, I don't want that one next. I don't want that one next. What do I want next? I don't know, man. I don't know what I want next. I guess I 
got so many. I got so many to pick from. Oh yeah, this is one. Oh, I, I could have saved that for Moose too, but she's not here, so that's all right. I'll put it in here. I'll put it in now. During the next one. Oh hey. No delays. Oh, it's it's probably a very short delay. Uh, maybe ten seconds or something. Uh, to get to the video, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, anyway. <laughs> Whatever. There was something else I wanted to talk about. Ah, it'll come to me. I'll get to it later. Let's cover some more news stories. Oh, let's do more global warming. Global warming? <laughs> yeah, not so much. Um... From Principia, Principia, scientific-scientific.org, Arctic and Antarctic sea, sea ice now at historic high levels. That's right. Um, <laughs> global warming. No more snow. No more ice caps. Uh, uh, what? It's often claimed that modern-day sea ice changes are unprecedented, alarming and well outside the range of natural variability, yet scientists are increasingly finding that the biomarker, biomarker proxies used to reconstruct both Arctic and Antarctic sea ice conditions since the early Holocene reveal that today's sea ice changes are not only unusual, there is more extensive Arctic and Antarctic sea ice during recent decades than there has been for n nearly all of the last 10,000 years. Yes, indeed. Um, you'll have to look at these charts and graphs after I give you the link, but uh, it says here, the southern ocean surrounding Antarctica and sea surface temperatures have been cooling since 1979. Oh, I missed the duck. Oh, well. Um... <laughs> Anyway, there's, there's a lot more to this story, but but you get my point here. No, nobody else is going to try and get that duck. All right, I'll get it. What the hell? Um, uh, you get the, you get the point of the story. You've been lied to. You've been lied to over and over again. And a lot of people are buying this whole global warming, climate, man-made climate change, which is is basically they they had to change it from global warming because well there was no global warming. Um, <laughs> so. In the uh, uh, Michael Man made hockey stick boy, he uh, he he blew it. He blew it big time with his fake data. And and I, I think you all know about about Climate Gate. Do you, do you all remember Climate Gate? Um, if not, look it up. It was a big thing where they were emailing each other back and forth on how to manipulate the data to make it fit their agenda, which was to say global warming, say that. That uh, CO2 was uh, causing global warming, and you produce CO2, so therefore you, <laughs> you are the problem. Um, <laughs> your breath, your, your 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 farts are 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 causing the, the Earth to warm. What is climate change? A change is Earth's climate. A change in Earth's climate. Yes, a change in Earth's climate. And, you know, the, that's what climate does, is it changes. Climate always changes. It always has changed, and it always will change. If, if by chance, climate stops changing, then, um, <laughs> then that's it. That's the end. That, that's well, whatever, Pox, man. I'm just making a funny point. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Your farts are missing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, let me give you that link. Let me give you that freaking link. Because there's a whole bunch of data in there. You're going to want to look at it. And um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, that and the funny one of the funny things that came come, comes out of this whole uh, man-made climate change thing, which they leave out man-made altogether. Now they just call it climate change. But they're still pointing at you. But they call people that don't take their their word and 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 make it their own dogma. They call those people 
climate deniers, as if people are denying that there's a climate. <laughs> oh, good. That's good. That's good, Box. Boxy Fired is making a GUI in Visual Basic. I love Visual Basic. That, 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 was, that used to be my bread and butter. Um, I, I, I made all kinds of... Well, what are you using as a back end? Uh, uh, you, you know, I, I, I really like the MS Access database as a back end for, uh, for VB to, to, to do number crunching and, and databasing and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, MySQL works great or SQL Server or uh, anything you can get um, that's out there, but uh, I, I used to really love the, uh, uh, the, the 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 MS Access database back in the day. Oh, it's a line from a show. Oh, people are making fun. People are making fun of Visual Basic. <laughs> I love Visual Basic. <laughs> it's so easy. Uh, yeah, you just drag and drop set properties, and yeah, man, it's cool. Uh, yeah, well, you need to do a little more than that, but, you know, that, that's the basic core of it there. Um, yeah. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, did I mean to talk about, I think, I think I meant to talk about this earlier, when I was talking about another story. Oh, yeah, I meant to talk about this when I was talking about the SpaceX article, um, but, I, but I missed it. So here it is for you. Back in 2001, and we mentioned Dennis Kucinich in the chat earlier, but back in 2001, Dennis Kucinich, representative, uh, congressional representative there, uh, who was on the House Science, Armed Services, and International Relations Committees, um, put out a put out a bill, an act, which he called HR dot HR two nine seven seven, the Space Preservation Act of two thousand one. The Space Preservation Act of two thousand one, <laughs> which states its purpose to preserve the cooperative, peaceful uses of space for the benefit of all humankind by pr permanently prohibiting the basing of weapons in space by the United States and to require the President to take actions to adopt and implement a world treaty b banning space-based weapons. And let me just point out that this bill that he submitted and, and proposed got as far as being introduced, and that's it. It never went further. It, it, it never went beyond this act here. <laughs> but he wanted a permanent ban on space weapons. Uh, and, and, of course, they were never, never going to agree to that. Um, but it goes through in, in, this, in this bill, and, and it talks about various things that we all have talked about on many times. Psychotronic weapons, uh, direct energy weapons. Uh, molecular or atomic energy subatomic particle beams, electromagnetic radiation, um, chemtrails. Yes, it, it talks about chemtrails in this bill. <laughs> High altitude, ultra low frequency weapons, uh, laser weapon systems, strategic, theater, tactical, or or extraterrestrial weapons. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, chemical, chemical, biological, environmental, climate, and tectonic weapons, um, which would be for earthquakes, causing earthquakes. Um, so, yeah, this was all there. They, they admit that all these things exist. Well, this guy admitted, uh, Dennis Kucinich, who was, um, he was, a, he was a decent guy if it wasn't for his socialist tendencies, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of like Dennis. He, he was all right. Um, in a way. <laughs> For one of them. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, so, anyway, they, they talk about all that stuff in that bill. Or he talks about it. He wrote it. And um, 
it's it's a little bit crazy that it, that it actually got got out. I mean, I guess if if one of those guys puts a puts a bill out there, um, it's it's going to be public record, right? And so whatever he puts into that bill is going to be part of the public record. And uh, yeah, you know, Chloe, I, I I guess, um, but even in the times uh, back back then. Uh, when I was a voter, <laughs> free enslaved, vote home. Uh, yeah, even I would have never voted for Kucinich. Um just because of the fact that he did have he did have some serious social socialistic tendencies that that I was. Uh, he, he talked a lot of truth, though. He talked a lot of good stuff, man. The world's a rockin', don't come a knockin'. <laughs> Anyway, there's there's the link to the the, the bill there, and and I give you a link to the other story earlier. All these links, by the way, they'll be they'll, they'll be in the blog tomorrow. So uh, if you if you miss something, just go to the blog tomorrow, and, and you'll be able to find it and um, see what's going on with that there. Yeah, yeah, he, he was very honest. He was very honest and upfront. Uh, or I imagine he still is, but he's not. I don't think he's in politics any longer. So yeah, because it was an all right guy. But uh, yeah. Anyway, speaking of space and such things, this weekend, tomorrow and Sunday, the Leonid meteor shower will peak. So if you're out there in the middle of the freezing nights, um, look up into the sky. Uh, the meteor shower, which gets its name because Meteors often appear to originate from the constellation Leo, peaks on the night of Saturday, November 17th, and early the next morning. Meteors may be visible throughout the month of November, but the peak should uh, produce rates of 10 to 15 meteors per hour. The best chance for seeing meteor meteors is to find somewhere dark, away from city lights, that light pollution. The waxing gibbous moon will also pose a challenge this year as its brightness will drown out some of the dimmer meteors. Despite the meteor shower's name, meteors should be visible uh, across the night sky in all directions. So uh, if, you, if you like meteor showers and you don't mind the freezing cold outside, um, yeah, check it out. It, 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 it's kind of fun to, to watch meteor showers from time to time. In the, in the middle of winter, I'm, I'm less I'm less prone to do so. <laughs> but some of y'all, you Floridians, maybe um, may, may want to get out there and check it out. If if you know you're up in the middle of the night, you can't sleep anyway, and uh, you, you can find a nice place to look at the sky where there's not too much light. So eh, it's something to think about. You know, it's cool. Uh, I like meteor showers. Um, Maybe you'll get a big old one come down. A d giant meteor of death. <laughs> oh, we'll get to those later. <laughs> okay. Um I got I got so many stories here that uh Oh, I I I, I never did get to this one on the show. So let's cover this one. Talking about science crap. Now, North Korea's foreign hey, ministry... You shut up. <laughs> Dang videos that start playing on you. Uh, what's this? Texas had one. Made the news. Oh, a big, a big meteor? Cool. Um, this is from uh, November 5th on dailystar.co.uk. Scientists launch 50-foot nuclear reactor named Floating Chernobyl. <laughs> they did this. They've actually done this. Russian scientists have launched a 500-foot nuclear reactor dubbed the Floating Chernobyl because it can move around on the water. Just what you want. Just, 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 just what you want. A big, and, and they named it Chernobyl. <laughs> they could have named it after some reactor that hadn't melted down, but no, no, that's this is where they went. 
the 70 million pound project named the Academic Lomazlav uh, is currently docked at the northwestern port city of Murmansk. Uh, uh, it is said to be capable of producing enough power to keep a town of around 100,000 residents going. Pavel Apatov, deputy director of Russia's nuclear power station, uh, operator Rosen Bottom, uh, said, this is an obvious breakthrough in nuclear energy. Russia is the first country to, re to receive this technology. It has very good potential. <laughs> and you know, what they could do is just float it to, to some country and cause it to melt down. And then you'd have a nuclear meltdown right there on your shores. Wouldn't that just be something special? Um, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's it's amazing the kind of things these people do. Did I spell that wrong? I forgot the Y. Chernobyl. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Here it is. Uh, Kate came up with Sputnik news. Huge and colorful. Huge and colorful. Fireball lights up Texas skies. Rattles some homes. Sweet. I guess it didn't get anyone. On the Sputniknews.com here. Uh, folks living in, folks, folks living across Texas were offered shocking surprise late Thursday night after a fireball appeared in the skies, lighting up the night and producing a sonic boom. And this was um, November 16th. Wait, that's today. Okay. Um, anyway, having received more than 95 reports of the fireball. The American Meteor Society, yeah, there is one of those, American Meteor Society, noted that the most of the sightings took place near Texas, Fort Worth, Houston, and San Antonio areas. Uh, one sighting was recorded in Savannah, Oklahoma, and two others were reported in Louisiana's Lake Charles and uh, Doosan areas. It says, I've never observed a meteor before, but this one was absolutely beautiful, Rebecca of College Station Texas wrote in her report to AMS, it was such a brilliant color of blue and it was very big. I felt fortunate to have stepped outside with my dogs just at the right time to observe it on such a clear night. Cold, beautiful night like tonight. I'm 36 years old and I have never seen anything like it in my lifetime. Yep, and the dogs got to see it too. So cool. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, that 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 that's neat. That's neat. I like meteors and other space stuff. Um, I'm looking here, but I, I don't see. Uh, so some people saw it in Texas, in uh, Travis and Hayes counties. That's good. That that's. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't see anything about where it landed or if anybody went out and found it or whatever. But that's all right. That's all right, Mama. Water, that's Fukushima. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, I have a surprise for me, I guess. I, I'm not sure what this is. Poxified has requested it, and I'm going to play it for you all. It's a, a band called Cybotron, and 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 the song is called Black Devil's Triangle. Sorry about that. I got lost. So here you go. Thanks, Box. Well, that was a rather adventurous set. <laughs> that last track there was uh, Steven Siegel doing their version, quite a different version, of House of the Rising Sun. Uh, prior to that was David Lee Roth and California Girls. And we kicked it off with a few tries of, of poxified requests. I, I, I can't even tell you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that 
that, that was a, a rather adventurous set going on there for you all. <laughs> oh, sometimes things just don't work out exactly as planned. And that was one of those times. <laughs> Uh, fun, though. Fun! I say fun. Anyway. <laughs> Every song's not going to be a winner. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Whew. Who knows? Who knows what goes on? in people's minds, because they wrote these songs, they write these songs, and they put them out there. So many Moose Girl requests. Um, yeah, we'll do this one now, oh, that'll work out. That'll work out great. Okay. <laughs> Howdy, Hans, by the way. Nice to see you popping on in here and asking the question of, is there a Freaker's Ball show on tonight? Because if you're tuned in, then... You're hearing it, so you probably realize that, yes, yes, there's a Freaker's Ball show. And it, I, I have it set for the direct feeds rather than the uh, alternative. I mean, I have it rather than the, the normal website because there was a possibility, and, and so far it hasn't happened. Is it Balls to the Wall? Well, it's halfway Balls to the Wall, halfway Freakers. I, I, think, I think that's the way we'll... We'll say that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's see what else we've got to look at. We got, I got, this is a good, good, good time to clear out some stories here. I'm going to go down to, uh, to, 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 to like the bottom of my, my, my story list that I have set up here and see what I can find of stuff that I never quite got to. This is a good one for you all. And you can believe it or not. I tend not to believe it. But but they're telling you it here in this story on QZ.com. Uh, so I'll share it with you and you can uh, make up your own mind. BPA-free plastics may not be safer than regular plastics after all. What? So what? So are, are they saying regular plastics have our our BPA plastics? Is that is that what that means? BPA free plastics may not be safer than regular plastics because as far as I know, BPA is not part of plastic. It's a coating they put on afterwards. Um, but that's what they're telling you here. It says consumers turning to plastics made with alternatives to BPA in the hopes that they're safer. Which, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with the uh, effects of BPA upon the human body, <laughs> it's not good. Especially not good if you're a man, uh, because they they, they 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 kind of uh, pump up your estrogen and and lower your testosterone. <laughs> That's what BPA does. So it, it's it's, it's not something that that uh, your average man is going to want. Anyway, a new study published in the journal Current Biology concluded that human uh, or that common alternatives to BPA caused harmful effects in mice, notably in their reproductive cells. The findings add to the mounting body of evidence that these alternatives carry their own health risks. As science noted, uh, which was is uh, sciencemag.com noted, if further research on animals and humans continues to support these findings, it could derail efforts to reassure the many consumers already nervous about the plastics in their food, food and drink containers, that there uh, there are safe options to choose from. So basically, if it's plastic, you probably don't want it, but. How do you avoid it? I mean, so many, so many, so many containers are, are made of plastic. You know, what do you else you got? You got glass, I guess. 
or cans. <laughs> and I think even on the, like if it's a can that has a drink in it, they put BPA in those too. Um, so I guess glass is the only safe thing. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't imagine. Um, it says the industrial chemical has been used for decades to make the plastics that food is packed in, packaged in, and the resins used to line items such as cans. And they, such as cans. In 1998, she was doing a study using the eggs of mice, and she found an unusually high number of them had defects. She figured out that a temporary worker in the lab had used a harsh floor cleaner instead of a mild detergent to clean out the mice cages and bottles, damaging the plastic and causing BPA to leach out. They always say beer tastes better from a bottle. Well, if you got a can or a bottle, then yeah, uh, it does actually taste better from the bottle. Um, and, and if you can get it from, straight from the tap into a glass mug, then you're even better. But whatever. The new study tested the effects of BPA on and common alternatives, such as BPS, bisphenol S, BPF, another bisphenol product, and BPAF, on female and male mice. It found that chemicals disrupted the way genetic information was passed down during the, during meio, meiosis. I don't know what that word is. Uh, the, the division of cells necessary to produce an egg and sperm cells in sexually pr reproducing mammals. And it suggests the problem is with bisphenols as a class. So why are you using them? The study arose from the from circumstances similar to the one that prompted Hunt's first look into BPA. She had recently discovered the normal washing of her new BPA-free cages, made of polysulfone, were degrading from uh, to form BPA-like compounds and causing similar issues. So, okay, you eliminate that one, too. <laughs> anyway. Uh, since still, many people are looking for alternatives for them, the, the, for them, the study by Hunt and other authors has a warning. Although BPA-free is a valuable marketing tool, and most consumers interpret this label as an indication of a safer product, our findings add to growing evidence from studies in what C. elegans, zebrafish, mice, and rats, as well as human in vitro studies that replacement by, by bisphenols have the potential to introduce adverse effects similar to the BPA. Well, of course it tastes best from a frozen mug, but if you've got a choice of a can or a bottle, go with the bottle. <laughs> anyway, um, so I, I, there, that doesn't seem to be like there's really an answer yet. Uh, they're saying they're not using BPA, but they're using other bisphenol products, which are not good either. So, <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> uh. Now, here's a question you could probably answer for yourself because, well, it's easy. Um, if they use it, I think that's the proper answer. If they use it, then the answer is yes. But if people continue to stick with what they know, then the answer is no. And uh, that, that's kind of sad. Because I think, personally, people should switch. But that's me, and that's not them, and, and who am I? I'm nobody uh, to tell other people what they should or should not do. So what's the question? Can DuckDuckGo become the anti-Google? And I, as I said, yes, if they use it, if people use it. So recently, a privacy-oriented search engine called DuckDuckGo raised $10 million from a Canadian uh, pension fund, uh, reports marketplace.org, saying the privacy-focused search engine is trying to establish itself as the anti-Google. An anonymous reader uh, quotes their report. So, it's like Google, except when you search on it, you're completely anonymous, says Gabriel Weinberg, CEO of the company. The searches are encrypted, and the site knows where you are, but only when you're searching, 
and it does not store your personal information. We serve you uh, the, the search results, and then we throw away your personal information. So your IP address and things like that, and we don't actually store any cookies by default. And so when you search DuckDuckGo, it's like every time you're a new user, and we know nothing about you. Weinberg said about a quarter of Americans have taken some action to protect their privacy, and DuckDuckGo searches have been growing about 50% a year. We are proud to have a profitable business model that doesn't rely on collecting personal data. Did you think they could even do that? Could you imagine they could even do that? Uh, the company tweeted in June, and uh, this week they also shared a quote from Harvard Business Review article that asked, how far can the surveillance economy go? Most consumers are either unaware of the personal info they share online or, quite understandably, unable to determine the cost of sharing it, if not both. So, I suggest DuckDuckGo. I, I, I think it's a great search engine. I have it set as my default search engine on all my browsers. And, um, hey, if you're not using it, you might want to try it out. It's really easy to switch your uh, your default search engine on your browsers. And, and instead of saying Google it, say DDG it, DuckDuckGo it. And uh, I, I think you'll be you'll be pleased with the results, that, as, as pleased as you are. Um, with, with what you're getting from Google, so here's the next version of DuckDuckGo. What, what, what's that, Chloe? Um, Oh, next duck, 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 oh, well, I'm not familiar. I'll try that one out. I'm not familiar with it. And here's a, 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 a probably more pertinent question. Um, if you lead people to a more private search engine, will they care? <laughs> will they care? Um, so I, I'm just going to give you the link to this because... You know, to, to me, it's like uh, people, uh, I don't know, they walk around with their cell phones all day, all over the place, and cell phones are tracking them all, all over the place. And, and I, I think I think um, most people just don't really give a shit, uh, personally. Um, start page is okay, too. Yeah, I like start page, which used to be something else. Um, but yeah, I, I do like Star Page as well, uh, free life. And then, um, yeah, uh, there's, there's, a, there's, a, Google provides a ton of other products besides the search engine. Um, so it, it it's difficult to, to totally shed Google from your life if you're active on the web as a, a developer. Uh, Bing, screw, screw Bing. Um, <laughs> That's that's Microsoft. You, you want nothing to do with Bing. <laughs> uh, sorry, if you know, the microphone thing. I was scratching my ear there. Um, yeah, Bing Bing is bad. Bing 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 bad. Bing bad. Um, Yahoo. Uh, yeah, they got some. They, Bing has photos. DuckDuckGo's got a lot of photos. Tons tons of photos on, on DuckDuckGo, and, and they're not all protected like uh, like. Uh, Google has done, so, whatever, anyway, like I said, I'm just digging into some of my older stories here, see, see, see what else, see, we'll see what else we got here, um, the, uh, apparently, and, and I, and I don't know how true this is either, but th this guy claims to be <laughs> the father of the World Wide Web, it says he launched a radical startup to take the Internet back from uh, Google and Facebook. And um, let's see, what, what's his name? Um, for people who thought, uh, who want to make the Internet, for people who want to make sure the web services, uh, hum, web serves humanity, I can read, I know I can. We have come to, <laughs> we have to concern ourselves with what people are building on top of it. Tim Berners-Lee, apparently the father of the Internet, told Vanity Fair last month, I was devastated. 
He said, well, father of the web, not the internet, excuse me. Um, I, I was devastated, he said, while going through a litany of harmful, dangerous developments of the past three decades of the web. That's why the father of the World Wide Web has launched a startup that intends to end the dominance of Facebook, Google, Amazon, while in the process of letting individuals take back control of their own data. Berners-Lee, new online platform and company Interrupt, is uh, being described as a personal online data store, or POD, where everything from messages to music to contacts and other personal data will be stored in one place overseen by you, the user. Instead of an array of platforms and apps run by corporations seeking to profit from your personal information, the project seeks personal empowerment through data and aims to take back the web, according to the company's statements. So, uh, whether anything comes of this, we'll, we'll have to find out, but... Uh, um, yeah, yeah, the web is just one protocol of the many, 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 many on the, the interwebs. So, it's, I don't know. If he, if he can do it, if, if he is actually the guy um, that is the father of the interwebs, <laughs> Yeah, that's you see that's the thing. But he says you have control over it. Now I I I have been uh, I don't I don't like the whole cloud situation. I never liked it from the beginning, back in like 2000 when they started pushing it, because it, it was like no why why do they, they, why why do you want to hand over everything that you have to send to some third party? What, what's the benefit of that? How is that helping me? And uh, I don't know, but wh whatever. <laughs> oh man! All right, let's uh, let's let's play some more music here. <laughs> let's see what we got here. Make sure how we got stuff lined up right. Okay, everything looks good. Um, according to Judge Dread, Jay Dread, Al Gore is a transsexual. Okay, so he was actually a woman? <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Alice Gore. Maybe it's Alice Gore. Okay. Carlos. For Hansel. All right, very nice. That was uh, Cream with Badge from 1969, posted up there by Monroe's Retro. I believe that was a Cowboy Tech request right there. And uh, great stuff. Uh, classic, classic, classic. Indeed. Uh, before that, we had uh, My Baby Left Me and Matchbox by Jeff Beck and the Big Town Playboys. Great stuff as well. Kicking it off with a Hansel request. Santana, Evil Ways. All good, all good. All right. Oh, look at that. Uh, free slaves, albino dog, is ruined some fur. That's good. It, 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 it's good for dogs to have fur. <laughs> oh, I've, I've seen some of them hairless dogs. I'm not. I'm not impressed by those. I don't want nothing to do with any of those. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> So let's see. So how many of y'all are gonna have turkey on Thanksgiving? Are you gonna go out and grab some of that, grab up some of that turkey? All dogs need love, but I don't. I don't, I don't need to have anything to do with it with a with a with a with a hairless. <laughs> Sorry, Chloe. I, I just uh, they, they they just creep me out. They just creep me out. <laughs> Do I know Chloe? Um, not personally. I mean, you know, I would say no. <laughs> I just know her in chat. 
She seems... What? What the hell? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I think we're good. So ha how many of y'all going to have turkey for Thanksgiving? I'm going to pass on the turkey this year. I, I do them every now and then, every, well, uh, a couple of years or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pass on the turkey this year. So I'll just have chicken. I'm going to have chicken, I think. If someone else cooks, I don't. I don't mind cooking the turkey. Uh, it's it's like you know dealing with the carcass afterwards is pain in the ass to me. But what do I know? A little of most stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah, I like turkey. I mean, it tastes good, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I have bought before, and maybe I'll try it again this year. Um, who knows? They sell the just the turkey breast there at the store, and those are all right. I could I could deal with that all right. But anyway, whatever. So here's the story. Tell me if you agree. I agree, but we'll see what you think about it. It's posted on normal.org, and I know normal's got its problems, but this is a good one, or a good suggestion by them. Time for the FDA to recommend international descheduling of cannabis. Yes. Commenting closed on Wednesday, October 31st, and normal delivered 10,117 comments. The U.S. FDA is seeking public comments, or was seeking public comments, specific to whether uh, changes ought to be recommended regarding the international, international classification of cannabis as a controlled substance. Members of the public haven't had until October 31st to submit their comments to the FDA for consideration. The FDA said that the comments will be considered in preparing a response from the U.S. to the World Health Organization regarding the abuse, liability, and diversion of marijuana and certain other substances. In April, in response to a similar FDA request, Normal collected and hand-delivered over 10,000 comments to the agency calling, it on, calling on it to recommend the lifting of international restrictions criminalizing the plant. In Normal's latest comments to the FDA, it opened that can cannabis be removed from international drug conventions so that nations that wish to do so may further expand their regulations uh, governing cannabis use, possession, production, and dispensing for either recreation and or medical use. See, that, that, and that's where they get twisted up and get twisted around there. Um, you, you, you know, <laughs> the, the government should have no say. So if, if you are going to totally deschedule it, deschedule it. Don't let any anybody pass any laws uh, or regulations or whatever uh, about marijuana, about weed, about pot, about cannabis. About any plant. <laughs> uh, okay, Free, Free and Slave says he was asking if Chloe know about the operation. Uh, so albino dog is pure white uh, like the snowflake looks. He's a big dog from our gang. Oh, cool. Web feet. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um Free the weed. That's that's my that's my take on the matter. Free the weed. Uh, I don't need that article anymore. That's old news. That's uh, old news. Oh, what now? I don't, I don't understand that one. I don't know how I got that in my list. Okay, here's a list. Here's 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 a here's a, here's a story <laughs> from activistpost.com. 
going underground, cell, <coughs> cell sites and other Wi-Fi radiation emitting equipment in residential neighborhoods and everywhere else. Wi-Fi emitting devices are being installed underground. For decades, U.S. agencies have followed a policy that no threshold of radiation exposure is risk-free. Decades of research re supports this, both on ionizing and non-ionizing cell phone wireless Wi-Fi radiation. Insurance companies have caught on, and, and it has affected the way they do business. But who cares, right? The race for 5G and the implementation of smart cities in the U.S. is basically allowing the telecom industry, a.k.a. big wireless, to install harmful radiation-emitting 4G and 5G small cell towers and other wireless infrastructure structure, both above ground and below in residential yards, public rights-of-way, etc. Many elected officials and government employees seem to be sold on doing this because they keep introducing, pushing, and passing federal leg legislation to prevent municipalities from stopping installation. This is happening despite widespread scientific opposition. Municipal government and citizen protest lawsuits threatened and filed by various organizations and health effects on pets and people already being reported where it's been installed. Activists post reported about wireless infrastructure being installed underground almost three years ago. The FCC is not a health or environmental agency. Their job <laughs> is to regulate the telecom industry and to protect the public uh, which which hadn't been which they hadn't been doing Anyway, long before the ridiculous race for 5G and the markets of marketing of smart cities, it's only getting worse, and the EPA now seems to be encouraging this as well. Uh, so yeah, they they don't care if they kill you as long as they make a buck or two. Uh, actually, I, I kind of think they prefer to kill you. Um, I, I think that's that's more accurate way of, of stating that. But uh, we've heard enough about 5G from, not about enough, but we've heard plenty about 5G from lots of people around the web, including our, our very own Gary L. and Gigi's Boo talking about it quite a bit. Um, it, it, it's bad news, uh, and and uh, these guys are going to put it out there regardless of all of that. So, yeah, 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 whatever. Whatever. <laughs> I came across this story today. I, I just found it humorous, although maybe it's not all that humorous. It do, does make me laugh, so I'm going to assume it's humorous, but... Um, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, you you make the call. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Saying men aren't women... Saying men aren't women now qualifies as hateful conduct on Twitter. What now what? What now what? <laughs> if you say that that woman is not a man or that man is not a woman, a woman, or just in general make the comment that men are not women, you did what to who? How many times? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Twitter's crusade against hate speech has vanquished yet another meaty face. A prominent Canadian feminist says they, that the company flagged a tweet she wrote in which she meekly suggested 
Men aren't women. Isn't Twitter fun? <laughs> Megan Murphy, editor of Canada's leading feminist news portal, Feminist Current, was recently informed by Twitter that two of her tweets had violated the platform's rules against hateful conduct. One of the offending tweets stated that men aren't women, while the other asked, how are trans women not men? <laughs> now, now <laughs> let me just say about Twitter, because, you know, I personally, I, I love Twitter. I use it all the time. It's, a, it's an awesome uh, uh, source um, for various information. But the thing is, okay, I, I get these things every Friday. They send me an email of how many people have either followed or unfollowed me. And this week, there was a, a number of 14 people that had unfollowed me, it said. But then when I look at the, at the data of who these people were that unfollowed me, they didn't unfollow me. Twitter suspended their accounts. Ten of the 14 people that supposedly unfollowed me uh, had their accounts restricted or suspended. Because <laughs> the people I follow tend to be the type of people that Twitter would go after. Now, I know some, you know, I get I get follows every week from various people, and I think a lot of them are just hoping for a follow back, and I don't I don't always or usually even follow back. So, um, okay, Pox, I, I think I'm already following you there on the Twitter. But, um, <laughs> anyway, it's ridiculous. Uh, what are you, you going to say? Dogs are not cats? That, is, that, is that hate speech, too? Cats are not dogs? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I I don't know. It, it, it's 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 like what what do you what do you, what is your goal here? Uh, when when you're going after something that's a factual statement and saying that that is some kind of hate speech, it's it's a ridiculous ridiculous thing. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um. Here, talk about ridiculous things. State of Oregon. State of Oregon. <laughs> From DCClothesline.com. Oregon's new red flag law. State confiscates nearly 50 gun owners' guns. Cooper. Yes, that's right. The state of Oregon is full-blown communist. These anti-Americans running the show in the western state have implemented their newest man-made constitution violating laws in the form of red flag laws and those laws have resulted in nearly 50 people having their property stolen from them even though they were not charged with any crime nor were found guilty of any crime uh, Oregon Live reports at least 46 Oregonians have been ordered to surrender their guns under a new type of court order intended to stop suicides and mass shootings, law enforcement and court officials testified to the state lawmakers Wednesday. Tens, ten of the cases affect people in various counties. I don't even read, read that. Um, in, in a June news story, shots not fired. Yeah, I'm on. Uh, shots not fired. The Oregonian Oregon Live reported that the first several dozen gun seizure orders issued under the new law. Uh, the, the, the newsroom analysts uh, showed judges ordered guns seized mostly from people affected by substance abuse, anger, or mental health problems. Anger. Anger. Affected by anger. What does that mean? While there were people in the midst of this, who broke the law in issuing threats to commit mass shootings and such, not all of the people were going to do so. No, not hardly 50 people in Oregon were going to go do mass shootings. I believe that the legislation is an important component of comprehensive approach to gun reduction, Reese testified. Uh. Uh, anyway, what it comes down to now is anybody can report anybody else and, and say, 
well, I think this person is dangerous, and and so you need to go and take this person's guns away, because they're a dangerous critter. They're a horrible person, and you go get their guns. And that that's really that's that's all it comes down to now, is um. This this is how far they've gone with this, so, you you think your constitution is valid? <laughs> oh man, you kind of sound like Bubbles from the Trailer Park Boys. I have no idea who that is, and I don't even know if you're talking to me. <laughs> Bubbles from the Trailer Park Boys. Mueller. <laughs> right. Oh, this is a fun story, too. Well, not really that fun. But it was a... I, I didn't know that you could actually um, copyright a word. Like a generic word, but apparently you can. Um... Elon Musk's Tesla Kila faces pushback from Mexican tequila regulators. One tequila, two tequila, three tequila floor. <laughs> As it says here in the article. So it turns out that you need more than a catchy brand name to distill tequila. One of Tesla co-founder Elon Musk's latest project was known as Tesequila, is facing a pushback from Mexico's Tequila Regulatory Council. The CRT, as they're known, has said in a statement to Reuters that Tesequila brand evokes the word tequila, and tequila is a protected word. A protected word. Tequila. That's like saying rum or whiskey are protected words. Beer is a protected word. But no, apparently it's true. If it wants to make tequila viable, viable as a tequila, it would have to associate itself with an authorized tequila producers, producer, comply with certain standards, and request authorization from Mexico's Industrial Property Institute. It's a word. It's not... Yeah, you, you can't, you can't, it's, it's just wrong. <laughs> well, to, to be able to take that, take a word and do that, to, to say, I don't know, I, it, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. How, how could that be a thing? Tesla Kila, Tesla Kila. Uh, not that I would drink anything Elon Musk produced anyway, but to, to me, that's got nothing to do with it. The, the problem here is the fact that you are protecting words, making it so you can't produce a product that even evokes that word. There's <laughs> something, something wrong with that picture. Something wrong with that whole picture. Now, I, I posted this article into the chat earlier this week as well, but here it is for you, because I, I found it uh, interesting, and, and we have a few of these folk here uh, around the uh, around the around the chat that that are in this situation that I am aware of, and some that are not always around the chat, but occasionally around the chat that, that are in this situation. Um, and that is this. One million Americans live in RVs. Meet the modern nomads. This is on the sfgate.com, San Francisco Gate. So, when Robert and Jessica Meinhofer told friends they were moving into an RV in 2015, most thought they were crazy. The questions poured in. How could they go from living in a 2,000 square foot home to living in, in a 250 square foot trailer? What would they do with their stuff? What would their children, ages six and nine, do for school? Was this a midlife crisis? The, 
The hardest people to convince were Jessica's parents, who grew up in an impoverished Latino neighborhood in the Bronx and worked so hard, worked hard so their daughter could have a better life. They couldn't understand why the couple wanted to live like migrant laborers. The Meinhoffers are doing this by choice, not financial desperation. They are part of a movement of people ditching sticks and bricks, uh, sticks and bricks homes that have long embodied the American dream and embracing a life of travel, minimal belongings, and working where they want. We're a family of four, redefining what the American dream means. It's happiness. It's not a four-bedroom house with a two-car garage, said Meinhofer, who is 45. The Meinhoffers had a dozen others who spoke, who spoke with the Washington Post uh, about this modern nomadic lifestyle, said living in a 200 to 400 square foot square feet has improved their marriage and made them happier. Even if they're earning less, there's no official term for this lifestyle. Most refer to them as full-time RVers, digital nomads, or work ampers. Work ampers? Work campers? Work ampers? Okay. Uh, <laughs> most modern nomads need jobs to fund their travels. Jessica Meinhofer works remotely as a government contractor, simply logging in from the RV. Others pick up gig work, cleaning campsites, harvesting on farms, or in vineyards, or filling in as security guards. People learn about gigs by word of mouth on Work Camper uh, news and Facebook groups, like one for Work Campers, that with more than 30,000 members. Big companies such as Amazon and JCPenney even have programs specifically recruiting RVers to help at warehouses during the peak holiday seasons. To me, I think it's great. I, 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 I mean, I could pro I've thought about thought about it would be a good idea to do, but I never actually did it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds great. You just travel around. You can see, wake up in a different place every whenever, however often you decide to to move every week, every day every month, but whatever. If you find a cool place, you can hang out there for an extra long time. I don't know. But to me, it sounds like a, a really uh, uh, kind of a kind of a neat lifestyle um, to, to have. You're just kind of cruising around, doing your own thing. Nobody bothering you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to play some more jams here. Hey, what's, what's my thing here? There it is. All right. Um, where's my where's my camera? Where'd my camera go? All right, <laughs> this is the Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Huh. Scooter? Uh, yeah, Chief. Remind me to stop setting up these video conferences. They're not very productive. You got it. Sheesh. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> well, that was the uh, <laughs> that was the Muppets there um, doing uh, Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody in a manner. Anyway, uh, that was originally a Darth Rome's request, but was re-requested this evening by Poxified. Uh, before that, we had Tab Benoit doing F Buffalo Springfield's for what it's worth. And we kicked it off the Black Rebel Motorcycle Club and Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. Interesting stuff. Yep. I think so. I think so. Anyway, um, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, well, tomorrow noontime if you're on the East Coast, but morning for me, uh, you're going to have uh, Flash and the dark table and um, that's a good show that you need to watch you need to listen to it uh, you can't watch it I guess you could watch it if you close your eyes and imagine that you're there or something like that but uh, yeah ch check that out tomorrow it's a cool show you probably want to see it you know it's uh, uh, listen to it <laughs> I keep going back there in my brain to the seeing the seeing thing I don't know Anyway, so yeah, yeah. So check that out tomorrow, man. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, Flash will talk about all kinds of various stuff, and and you'll be glad that he did. 
I think. Anyway, so he uh, he puts on a good show though. He talks about some good stuff. All right, and then um, t then on Sunday morning, it'll be me back here on RLM Radio doing the blues, playing some blues for y'all, about three hours worth of blues, three hours or so worth, and uh, we'll be playing some, some trivia here in the chat, so you come on in and, and you check out uh, what's going on there in, in the chat, and and you can answer some questions and have fun with all that stuff. Um, Hey, what the hell? It's good for you. <laughs> and then in the afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, noon o'clock Pacific, how do I find three hours of blues? Poxifies asks me, how do I find three hours? I've, I've, I've got weeks, months worth of blues. I can play on. <laughs> I've been doing the blues show for, I don't know, three years now or something like that. Um, and, 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 I, and I have a list of all the songs, and I, I have never, because I only do three hours a week, so, you know, that, that's 52, that's 150 hours, uh, 160 hours worth per year, and I have not played the same song uh, intentionally twice within within all those blues shows, not the same version of the same song anyway, uh, I, I have some, some songs I have multiple versions of, uh, but uh, yeah, I've got, I've got blues. Yeah, yes, indeed, yeah, I do. <laughs> anyway, Hal Anthony will be out in the afternoon well, behind the woodshed opening up the big old can of whoop ass. And, uh, yeah, that's some good information that you, you want to check out, too. And then on Tuesday, we'll be again, Flash, uh, at, 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 uh, uh, in a perfect world, at, at in, in a perfect world. Um, and possibly with a, with a co, co hostage. We'll see. Um, you never know, but uh, yeah. So um, check that out. 1 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday and Friday, of course, is Grammy Mary and Grammys. Oh wait, Grammy won't be on next Friday. That's the day after Thanksgiving, and she'll be doing family style stuff. But she'll be here Wednesday evening at her normal time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Check her out, Grammys Rocket Chair. And then myself and the Moose Girl will be back here next Friday night with uh, the. Black Friday edition of the Freakers Ball. So it, if you can find any songs that might fit into a Black Friday theme, whatever they may be, uh, put them in the request list and, and we'll play them for you. So what do we got here? We got four, we got, oh, nine. All right, we don't have time for that last one. All right, we'll, 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 we'll skip this one. All right. Sorry, Alpha Blondie. I was going to play out three tunes, but I don't have time for them all. That's four. That's eight. All right. Uh, okay. Let's let's, uh, let's let's just do these here. Well, not necessarily even shopping, but anything that would fit a Black Friday theme, whether it's about shopping or not, about crazy, greedy, insane people punching in each other in the face to get a toaster oven. I I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever may fit into a, a Black Friday theme. That could be anything, really. <laughs> yeah, you, you make the call. Anyway, here we go. Uh, enjoy. This, this, well, never mind. Oh, yeah. That there's the Mason Rack Band from Australia doing uh, their version, uh, one of their versions of Black Betty. I have a few versions by them. Uh, but great stuff, great stuff. Uh, before that, we had the Rolling Stones doing uh, Satisfaction. I, I can't get no. Uh, it was a Cowboy Tech request, but I think it was somebody else that originally requested that, and then Cowboy Tech re-requested it. So uh, thanks to whoever that uh, other person was. And... Um, Dang, I think that's going to wrap it up. It's been fun. I had a good time here tonight. And uh, Moose Girl should be back next week. Keep your fingers crossed. So it's not just me on here. And we'll have a regular good old uh, Freakers Ball, Black Friday Freakers Ball. And um, 
Have yourself a great weekend. I, I guess that's everything I got for you. Uh, talk to you all later. Peace.